Hello everyone. This is the second part of the topic fixed points. We can discuss an example show that the function g of x equal to x square minus 1 divided by 3 has a unique fixed point on the interval minus 1 1. So here we are given that the interval is minus 1 1 and we have the function g of x equal to x square minus 1 divided by 3. We have to show that this function has a unique fixed point on this interval. So from the previous theorem we have the sufficiency condition for the existence and uniqueness of the fix fixed point and it was the statement of that theorem. So here we have the function g of x equal to x square minus 1 divided by 3. We know the maximum and minimum values of g of x uh, in this interval uh, will be occurred uh, at the point x such that g dash of x is equal to 0 at the point x such that g dash of x is equal to 0 that is at the critical point x. Also we it will be occurred uh, at the endpoints also. So here endpoints are minus 1 and 1. Here we have the function g of x is equal to x square minus 1 divided by 3 is continuous because it is a rational function and the denominator is not equal to 0 therefore uh, it is a continuous function. Now we have g dash of x is equal to derivative of this is nothing but 2x by 3. So g dash of x exists on minus 1 1 and uh, the maximum and minimum value occurs at the endpoints and end endpoints are minus 1 and 1 and g dash of x is equal to 0 means we get uh, 2x by 3 equal to 0 g dash of x equal to 0 implies 2x by 3 equal to 0 that means x equal to 0 so the critical point is x equal to 0 so the maximum and minimum value occurs at the critical point x equal to 0 or x equal to minus 1 and x equal to 1 x equal to minus 1 and x equal to 1 are the endpoints of the interval. Now uh, finding the values of g at these points we have g of minus 1 is equal to 0 because it will be g of minus 1 is minus 1 whole square minus 1 divided by 3 it will be 0. Also g of 1 is also 0 1 square minus 1 divided by 3 is also 0. So g of minus 1 equal to 0 and g of 1 equal to 0 and g of 0 equal to 1 minus 1 by 3. So absolute mass maximum will be uh, occur occurs at uh, the point minus 1 and 1. Absolute maximum will be at uh, minus 1 and 1 and absolute minimum will be at uh, x equal to 0. Moreover, we have the uh, absolute value of g dash of x is equal to absolute value of 2x by 3 which is less than or equal to 2 by 3 for all x belongs to minus 1, 1. Therefore, uh, for x belongs to minus 1, 1 we have x is less than or less than 1. Therefore, modulus of 2x by 3 is less than or equal to by uh, less than 2 by 3. Therefore, <coughs> G satisfies all the hypothesis in the theorem 2.3 and therefore G has a unique fixed point in the interval minus 1 1. Okay, because we obtain that G is a continuous function and G of x belongs to AB for all x belongs to minus 1 and 1. Therefore, the G, G, exists, G has at least one fixed point. Uh, also, we obtain that mod G dash of x is less than or equal to uh, some k which is less than 1 because here we obtained that uh, mod g dash of x is less than or equal to 2 by 3. So this is equal to k. So just less than 1 also. 2 by 3 is less than 1. So this condition also satisfied. Therefore by the previous theorem we have uh, there is a, there is a uh, unique fixed point uh, in the interval minus 1, 1 for g. Next uh, if we need to find that uh, uh, fixed points uh, we, we can use this uh, definition we have the fixed point p is such that g of p equal to p that means p equal to g of p is equal to p square minus 1 divided by 3 because our g of x is equal to x square minus 1 divided by 3. So the fixed point p is such that p equal to g of p that is p equal to p square minus 1 divided by 3. So solving this we get p square minus 3p minus 1 is equal to 0 it is a quadratic equation in uh, p therefore p is nothing but minus b that is 3 plus or minus root of b square is 9 minus 4 a c a is 1 and c is minus 1 so plus 1 divided by uh, 2a that is 2 that is 3 plus or minus root of 13 divided by 2 <coughs> that is 3 plus root 13 divided by 2 and 3 minus root 13 divided by 2 so we are talking about the interval minus 1 1 so we know this point 1 by 3 or 3 minus root 13 divided by 2 belongs to minus 1 1 and 
the second one is 3 plus root 1 by 3 uh, root 13 divided by 2 does not belongs to minus 1 so the, these are the fixed points so in this interval minus 1 1 we have only one fixed point which is p equal to 1 by 2 into 3 minus root 1 by, uh, 13 this is the uh, unique fixed point in this interval so pictorically we can represent like this uh, this point will be 1 by 2 3 minus root 3 by uh, root 13 1 by 2 3 minus root 13 that is this this point will be the uh, that point so this is the fixed point it, it belongs to minus 1 1 and the second one is uh, this 1 by 2 3 plus root 13 it will be occurred uh, in this interval 3 4 i actually it will be uh, belongs to 3 4 so in minus 1 1 we have only one fixed point actually the value of this is nothing but 3.302 etc 3.302 etc and the value of 1 by 2 3 minus root 3 root 13 is equal to actually 0 0.3027 etc so this belongs to 0 point uh, minus 1 1 and the second one belongs to uh, 3 4 actually so in this interval the, there is only a unique fixed point okay now note that g also has a unique fixed point p equal to this second one for the interval 3 4 however g o 4 is equal to 5 that, that, that means g o 4 does not belongs to this interval and g dash of 4 is equal to 8 by 3 which is also greater than 1 which is not less than 1 so g does not satisfy the hypothesis of the theorem uh, that is the hypothesis of the theorem is that uh, g of x should be belongs to uh, 3 4 here we have the interval 3 4 but g of 4 is 5 which is good it is does not belongs to this point in the interval also, also we have g dash of 4 is actually 8 by 3 it is not less than 1 we, we need uh, in that theorem we have we need um, absolute value of g dash of x is less than 1 it should be less than 1 but it is uh, greater than 1 at the point 4 so uh, the hypothesis of the theorem 2.3 is not satisfied on this interval but it has a unique fixed point at in the interval 3 comma 4 it means that uh, the, the conditions in the theorem 2.3 are the sufficient condition only sufficient condition for a unique fixed point but it has uh, they are not necessary and not necessary means uh, if g of p has a unique fixed point then the conditions will satisfy that is the necessary condition but the conditions in that theorem are not necessary for example we obtained uh, here a uh, unique fixed point but the conditions are not satisfied that that means uh, in the in the above theorem if these conditions satisfied then we can say that g of x has a unique fixed point that is what is the sufficient condition for uniqueness of or the existence and uniqueness of the fixed point but the conditions are not necessary that means if g of x has a unique fixed point does not implies this condition satisfied that is why we say that uh, this, these are the uh, these are not the necessary, necessary conditions clear now we can discuss another example show that theorem 2.3 does not ensure a unique fixed point of the function g of x equal to 3 power minus x on the interval 0 1 even though a unique fixed point on this interval does exist that is we are given a function g of x equal to 3 power minus x so that is 1 by 3 power x and uh, we are given an interval 0 1 we have to show that even though a unique fixed point for this function exists in this interval the previous theorem 2.3 does not ensure a unique fixed point that is we have to show that the conditions on that theorem not satisfied for this function and this interval so here we, we know uh, this is the theorem 2.3 we are given that the function g of x equal to 3 power minus x it is continuous now what is g dash of x g dash of x is equal to we know uh, it is a function of the form a power x so we know the derivative will be a power x into ln a so here we have 3 power minus x here so uh, we have the derivative is g dash of x is equal to 3 power minus x into ln 3 into derivative of minus x we have to apply the chain rule here because here we have it is a function of minus x so we have to differentiate 
minus x also with respect to x. So the derivative of e power minus 3 power minus x is 3 power minus x into ln 3 into derivative of minus x which is minus 1. So minus 3 power minus x ln 3 which is less than 0 clearly because we have this is ln 3 minus ln 3 divided by 3 power x that is minus ln 3 divided by 3 power x that is positive and this is these are positive but here yeah, we, we have negative so it is less than 0 on 0 1. So the function g is strictly decreasing because the derivative is less than 0 on this interval. So on this interval we have the function is uh, strictly decreasing also we have we obtain that it is continuous. Now we have the functional value g of 0 equal to g of 0 is nothing but 3 power minus 0 or that is 1 by 3 power 0 that is 1 and g of 1 is uh, that is the, at the end point 1 we have g of 1 is 3 power minus 1 that is 1 by 3. Since we, we have uh, the function g is decreasing in this interval so the maximum value will be at this and the minimum value will be at the point 1 and it will be 1 by 3. So, g of 1 equal to 1 by 3 which is less than or equal to g of x for all x belongs to 0, 1 and because this is the uh, minimum value which is less than or equal to 1 that is 1 is the maximum value okay for all x belongs to 0, 1 this is equal to g of 0. Therefore, we can say that for any x belongs to 0, 1 we have g of x also belongs to 0, 1. So, this condition satisfied and this condition satisfied. Therefore, we can say that from, from the first part, we can see that G has at least one fixed point in the interval 0, 1. G has at least one fixed point in the interval 0, 1. We have to show that th this theorem does not ensure a unique fixed point. Okay. Now, for uniqueness, we need to, uh, we have this condition that is G dash of X exists 1 AB and G dash of X is less than or equal to K, which is less than 1 for all X belongs to AB. So, here we have g dash of 0 if you are taking the derivative at the point 0 g dash of 0 is equal to from this we get minus 3 power 0 ln 3 that is minus ln 3 which is minus 1.0961 etc so uh, g dash of x is not less than or equal to 1 that is modulus of g dash of x is equal to uh, not less than or equal to 1 on 0 1 so the second condition is not satisfied therefore the you cannot use this uh, theorem 2.3 this condition is not satisfied so uh, the theorem the theorem 2.3 cannot be used to determine the uniqueness but if you are plotting the graph of the given function we can see that there exists only one uh, fixed point because we have the function 3 power minus x also it, we obtain that it is uh, strictly decreasing so it will be like this and the fixed point will be unique here so the fixed point is unique but theorem does not imply that it has a fixed point okay so we verified that this theorem 2.3 does not ensure a unique fixed point yes but actually this function has a unique fixed point on this interval 0 1 but this theorem uh, does not ensure such a unique fixed point